Hi, so in this lecture we are going to discuss capacitors and super capacitors. Hmm. So what is a capacitor? First of all, you know that a capacitor is also an energy storage, electrical energy storage device, which is slightly different from batteries. How is it different from batteries? The battery has certain electrochemical reactions. Hmm. While in the case of capacitors, you will have a dielectric material. It's not that no electrochemical reaction is taking place, but you primarily have a dielectric material whose molecules can be polarized. Hmm. Positive and negative charges can be separated. And based on this principle, basically, you store the charge. And then when you discharge it, it is very rapid. So, for example, if I want to uh, make an electric vehicle, the vehicle will run on battery power. Hmm. But to start the vehicle, you will require a capacitor. Hmm. So, you will require high power density. So, to start the vehicle, you will have a capacitor. So, usually you will have a, a combination of battery and capacitor. Now, what is this super capacitor? It's also known as ultra capacitor. So, these are smaller devices. These are micro nanoscale devices in most cases where you have the plates with a much larger surface area, hmm, specific surface area and the distance between them is much, much smaller. And so, now why do we do that? We do that because, well, in the case of capacitor, you have what is known as the, as I just said that you have dielectric molecules and you have the polarization. Now, here you don't have molecules. So, you will actually, it's better in this um, diagram. So, see, in the case of capacitor, you have these molecules which get, the charges get separated. But in the case of supercapacitor, you have layers of positive and negative charge. Hmm. So, these are called the one pair with one positive, one negative charge is known as electrical double layer. Hmm, okay. Now, the separation between the plates or in the case of supercapacitor, we call them electrodes. So, separation between these electrodes is actually much smaller. Here in this um, image, I have shown both of them to be similar. But otherwise, it's much, much, much smaller. It is actually a few nanometers or a few micrometers in the case of supercapacitors. Hmm. Okay. And you have many such interfaces where the double, la double layers are formed. Hmm. So, these... These uh, two electrodes are soaked inside the electrolyte mm. and you do have electrochemical reactions in this case. Huh? So, these are soaked inside the electrolyte and everywhere where you have this interface between the electrolyte and your electrode, you have these double layers. And as I mentioned, then there are thousands of them in your, uh, you know, one supercapacitor and that is how a lot of charge can be stored. Okay. Now, are all... Uh, supercapacitors, electrical double layer uh, capacitors? The answer is no. You also have another mechanism. Sometimes there are some other reactions which are known as pseudo capacitance reactions. Hmm. So, this is where some redox reactions take place, some Faradic redox reactions. So, what is Faradic reaction? Basically, your electrode itself offers a certain electrical resistance, but it's a conductive material, so it does participate in the reaction, in the uh, electrochemical reaction. So, this is another mechanism known as pseudo capacitors. Now, in most cases, you will have a combination of EDLC and pseudo capacitors in your capacitor. Okay. Now, what is more important for us is the fabrication or the manufacturing of these um, uh, super capacitors. Hmm. We are talking mostly about super capacitors because in the case of large scale capacitors, you can have metal plates, you have very standard dielectric materials, polymers. That is kind of something which has already been um, been done, this research has been done for a very, very long time. But in the case of supercapacitors, the research is still very new. Now, the most common material that is used for this purpose is carbon. Okay. Now, one very important thing about carbon is that although carbon is one material, hmm, carbon atom, it, it's one material, right? I will call all carbon materials as one. But often based on manufacturing or synthesis, I will talk about this. Hmm. Based on how you prepare your carbon material, you have different names. In fact, it's very interesting that two carbon materials which may have very similar microstructure, their preparation methods can completely vary. And depending on that, you will give different names to carbon materials. For example, graphene and graphite, their structures are very similar. Hmm. It's the graphene that makes the graphite. Hmm. The only difference between graphene and graphite is that 
graphite has a 3d structure so you also have an organization a b a b a type crystal arrangement in the third dimension in the z dimension but in the case of graphene you have the 2d uh, layers are the same but they are randomly oriented on top of each other hmm. they are not organized in a b a b a they are not stacked you know as they are in the case of graphite but however how you get graphite is by mining by you know um, you can get graphite from there are a lot of mines in nepal there are mines all over the world that is how you get graphite you can also get it from the uh, petroleum byproducts for example you can do the heat treatment of uh, different types of petroleum pitches and that's how you can get graphite you can also get graphite from some polymers but graphene you will typically synthesize hmm. so that is chemically synthesized or you use the chemical vapor deposition techniques which we talked in we we have discussed that in another lecture hmm. so now although you will say that graphene and graphite are similar materials they are always given different names hmm. simply because of their manufacturing techniques otherwise one could actually call everything carbon diamond is also carbon hmm. graphite is also graphene is also fullerene also there are many forms of carbon which is a completely different area uh, to study but let's just say we use conductive electrically conductive forms of carbon for making supercapacitors okay um, now how do we do that if our carbon is in the form of certain powder then we can make some sort of paste we use a binder and we make a paste so if you have carbon nanotubes or graphene or any of these synthesized carbon materials hmm, which are prepared by bottom up methods let's say cvd and so on then you have these materials in bulk they come in powder form hmm. so you can mix these powders in some resins or binders and then you can make a paste and then you can make electrodes using printing of those paste so that is one method Hmm. now if you have bulk carbon materials for example what you can also do is you can take a polymer and then convert it into carbon similar to what you did for carbon fiber fabrication hmm. so what did you do for carbon fiber you make polymer fibers and then you do heat treatment convert it into carbon now you can also make any other uh, structure you can make a film of a polymer and again convert it into carbon you can lithographically pattern the polymer and then convert it into carbon by heat treatment so these are the top down manufacturing techniques for getting carbon electrodes okay now in addition to carbon um i mean in addition to the electrode material what you also have a separator in these ultra uh, capacitors hmm, which are ion permeable so they allow the ions to flow through them Hmm, but they are electrically insulating materials so there are typically polymer or uh, polymers or papers hmm, that are used with organic electrolytes and you can also use ceramics or glass fibers with aqueous electrodes so what we were talking about earlier is that you can use printing when you have these um, mixtures of uh, binder and carbon materials you can also use spin coating for making layers you can also use spray coating Hmm. if you have carbon powders and you can do polymer to carbon co uh, conversation uh, conversion as i already mentioned you can also do something uh, called laser assisted carbonization which i will discuss in the uh, next few lectures so these are the techniques actually i'm going to discuss in the next few lectures because for both battery and supercapacitor manufacturing or fabrication you heavily depend on carbon materials so how to get these carbon materials at large scale and also at very small scale micro nano scale in the next two lectures we'll just briefly discuss these things hmm. okay now uh, one more thing that i would like to point out in this lecture is that there's something also is a very new uh, area of research something known as the hybrid or lithium ion supercapacitors so now these are capacitors with lithium ion so there must be something hybrid about it right anything that is a mixture of everything we call it hybrid so these hybrid uh devices are basically in these devices you have anode that is made of carbon but you uh, sorry made of carbon but it has some lithium ion doped in it cathode is made of carbon hmm. okay and here the mechanism is basically it's kind of a hybrid between battery and capacitor hmm. so you have this 
lithium ion intercalation what is intercalation actually this uh, the fact that lithium ions go inside an electrode charge discharge star, charge discharge that cycle the fact when when lithium ion is going between the layer of two um, you know two layers of a material let's say carbon layers huh? that is known as intercalation so this plus the double layer formation you have you have both mechanisms and that is why these are hybrid devices and they provide much higher output voltages. Okay.